You want me to just go? Hello, Buccaneers. We are in Cajun Country, Louisiana, and we are going to show you the fun things you can do here. Hello, Buccaneers. We are in Lafayette, and we are going to show you the fun things you can do here. Hello, Buccaneers. We are in Acadiana, and we are going to show you the fun things you can do here. <coughs> you mean Acadiana? Yeah, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Hello, Buccaneers. We are in Acadiana, and we are going to show you the fun things you can do here. Hello, Buccaneers. We are in... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Buccaneers. We are in Acadiana, and we are going to show you the fun things you can do here. <laughs> Hello, Buccaneers. We are in. <laughs> Hurry, so we back. Hello, Buccaneers. We are in Louisiana, and we are going to show you the fun things you can do here. <laughs> Hello, Buccaneers. We are in a. <laughs> Hello, Buccaneers. We are in. We are in Acadiana region in Louisiana. Wait, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, get up. to use up every seat. I'll leave the kids. Hurry. 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 What? Hurry. <coughs> Take one and pass it down to the other kids. Hold it. <laughs> I want y'all to look up in the tree right here. Uh, see those little balls? How many of y'all are familiar with the term conifer trees? Yeah. Uh, a pine tree yeah. or a board of pine. You get that sticky sap on your hands. The cypress tree makes a uh, The early settlers would do what I just did, and they would have a bowl of these in the house like a potpourri, but also in the wintertime, they would take these seeds, they would boil them in hand. Birds, ma'am, and if y'all look up to look at the birds, that them in la bush. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> For those of y'all taking pictures, uh, especially like with the cell phone, if you don't have a strap attached to it, please don't lean over the edge of the boat to get a little bit better picture. We have uh, stumps and bumps underneath the water, and it would be very easy for me to hit a stump and all of a sudden your cell phone is where you don't want it to be. The weight of all this water has put so much pressure on the root system, he's actually become stunted and broke. a couple of y'all, if y'all were going to believe anything I tell you and I'd bring you back safe and sound, my seven granddaughters would never tell, would tell you to never believe a word comes out of my mouth. I'm tell you, I'm going to show you a bird can manger le cocodri. can eat the alligator. Stay up, it's getting kind of tough. Sight unseen. That's good. Some of y'all may recognize this bird. Uh, all of y'all from France, do y'all understand feet and inches for measurements? About as high as my old leg can go now. Thank you. These are all cypress trees again right in here. I want you to notice the red color of the bark. And as the trees age, cypress trees are more in the open. The sunlight will actually bleach that red color. It'll turn real...
each other. And this forms a thick, thick mat. It goes up and down as the water level in the lake goes up and down. That floating land, y'all, gets that thick. A female alligator, because her weight is horizontal like that, distributed horizontal, she can go walk in there all day long. If we tried to walk, I think that, that's the Grand Egret Leblanc, the great white egret. Either the, the great one or the, the snow eagle. Yeah, that's what you <clears throat> How y'all doing today? Good. Happy New Year, guys. You've been telling y'all the truth? Happy New Year. I've been lying since I left, Bob. I believe it. That was a good time. The little small white bird over here, I'm going to back up a little more, is the little snowy egret. There's three of them. The little snares, the little minnows and fish, they come swimming to the top. If that's not working, if y'all look back here a second, you'll see him walking and he's jerking his feet like this. And what he's doing, his toes are grabbing all the grass and stuff on the bottom of the swamp floor. It makes this unnatural movement. All the little minnows and fish get scared. They come to the top and he gets to eat them. Big bird is the great white egret. Beautiful birds with uh, sad stories, I'll tell y'all. See, he's walking on the floating land. Most of the birds we're going to see today are what they call wading birds. Wading birds walk in the water looking for food. day they had two of them uh, where we left in the boat a while ago they were looking up in the trees they were looking for little birds they were looking for all any kind of insects all of these birds are very patient very efficient hunters a lot of their food may only be an inch or two long and they may spend five minutes going to get that little piece of food so they're as careful as possible because they never want to miss the catch or the kill. Miss Celine, you all right up there? You see I got your name right this time. I didn't get you mixed up. If you're talking to me, that's right. And we're going to look at the tree up there with the uh, kind of Y at the top. Y'all can see as we go by there, there's a big nest. Okay, that is Oiseau Le Serpent. Oh, the snake bird. He had, he had his wings out. When, the reason he'll have his wings out, they can go under the their feathers dry for two reasons. Number one, so they can fly. Number two, if they don't get their feathers dry, mold and mildew gets in their feathers and uh, they'll lose their feathers and they'll become food for the alligator. The reason they call him the snake bird, uh, all birds usually have solid bones, hollow bones. His bones are solid. So when he sits in the water, because of the weight of the solid bones, his whole body drops in the water. And as he's swimming along, you just see his head and his neck bobbing up and down like this. And that's why they call him the snake bird. There's another one right there. Yeah, this nest of rapture birds, they seize by force, they have razor sharp claws, and a beak that will tear anything apart. They build that nest real high for two reasons. Number one, the rat snake can cl cannot climb that high to eat the eggs or the chicks. Number two, on top of the tree. When the when it's time this is a good working height for them because there's another nest on the other side of the lake. The last three. 
They're called temporary, permanent structures. They're very well built. They're very permanent. <coughs> if we have a hurricane, at which time they become immediately temporary. They'll drive the boat in on the left. And on the right side, y'all can't see, but there's a floor, and they have benches and stools to sit on. And when the birds come by, if they haven't drank too much beer, they'll try to shoot the birds. See the house? Where the hunters traffic. The fake ducks in the water, these are to tell them, hey, this is a good place to come get something to eat. They just don't tell them, P.S., you may get shot here. I had a young man with me a couple of years ago, and we go going by one of these blinds out in the lake, and he probably had at least 150 of these camera, and look, we're going by there, and he's back and forth like that for about 15, 20 seconds. He finally stopped, he looked up at me, he says, uh, Bob, thank you for not calling out my stupidity in front of all the pretty girls in the boat. Martin Swamp here in the United States. Every year in the spring, there are over uh, 15 species of wading birds that come here, and it's anywhere from 10 to 20,000 birds of all sizes, shapes, and colors every year. Oh, oui. 2,000 différents poissons qui viennent ici pour trouver printemps. À toutes les printemps. Y'all know what a multi-tool is, like a Swiss knife. Yeah. I got. I'm going to show y'all a Cajun multi-tool. It has no moving parts, and you can do four things with this. Number one, it's a paddle. Number two, I get stuck. Sometimes I use it to push the boat off a log. And a year ago, I had a very brave man with me one day. We had a boatload of people, and he looked at me. He said, "There's a, a fourth thing that you can do with it." He said, "It's a husband beater." His wife was pretty rough looking. <laughs> Got him? Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all never knew that such a creature existed? What's an alligator popcorn? Look right over here on this log to the right. Tell me what y'all see at about 2 o'clock. It's a turtle. turtle. It's not a turtle. That's what we call alligator popcorn. It's not a turtle? No, ma'am. <laughs> An alligator popcorn with the teeth don't finish off the digestive system well. That's a turtle. Around the beginning of December, I was in another part of the lake, and I, about a 10 foot long alligator. When he gets a turtle in his mouth, if he gets him long ways, every time he squeezes, it's going to slip out of his mouth. So he's got to get him perpendicular. And once he gets him perpendicular, that's it. That's it for the turtle. He was um, about as far as from me to this dead tree. And when he popped the shell, it was loud like a firecracker. And after that, it sounded like the popcorn popping in the pot. It's a good death for the turtle. They're called yellow belly sliders. They have yellow uh, stomach with different features on top. Normally, if they hear the motor or see that they do it three ways, they go sideways or they go head first. And if they go head first, they show you they're behind on the way down. Or if they go tail first, they're going to flash you with their yellow belly. And there's a term. In <laughs> Thank you. 
Ding. We had a 2016, we had a major flood here in South Louisiana. We had rain for three and a half days. And uh, I'll show you the marks on some trees after a while. Um, we had five and a half feet of water, about like this, for um, I guess maybe five. Now one question people ask, isn't it dangerous for people to come out here in canoes and kayaks? And there, there, are, there are big animals out here. Uh, there's there's a couple of them there about as long as from me to you, uh, which is alligators. If you would feed them, they would start coming up to the boats. They would expect something, and if you don't give them something, they would get very aggressive. And people in canoes and kayaks would be in a lot of danger. And several thousand people come uh, canoeing and kayaking here every year, and there's never been any uh, incidents. Eating bugs, we call them. They're really uh -huh. neat. The largest uh, alligator ever killed in Louisiana was in 1880, and Michael, it was about as long as from me to you. Wow. The largest crocodile skeleton ever found was the length of this boat plus seven feet. Wow. And it was found in a land environment you would never expect to find a crocodile in. Take a wild guess. was about 300 acres. One acre of land is about the size of a soccer field, a football field. It's now 900 acres because they uh, built this around. Gray stuff in the trees. Anybody know what that is? Barba Espanol. The Spanish conquistadors were the first white men here. The Indians did not have hair on their face. They called this tree hair, and they compared the Spanish soldados old scraggly beards to the gray stuff growing in the trees. It's been called Spanish law since the early 1500s. The actual color is not gray. The actual color is green. The gray is a scale that grows on it to keep the moisture inside. When we have heavy rains, it washes the gray off, and as soon as it quits raining, the gray grows back on there to keep the moisture inside. They would put it in their uh, pillows, their mattresses, the seats in the backs of their chairs. They would also make what was called a boussillage. They would take uh, moss and mix it with wet mud and pack it in the walls of the homes for insulation. How many of y'all like surprises? Yeah. In the warm months, if you grab some Spanish moss, you may find three surprises. 
Number one, you may find lice that gets in your hair and makes you itch. You may find uh, three little creatures down here, chiggers, mites, and red bugs. They're all signs from enemies of human flesh. You may find spiders and wasps. If you're having a bad hair day, you may find a uh, mat or a cat paw. take a lot of pictures out here. When I first started working for my friend, I thought, man, I'm going to give you a camera and take off. And I'd probably run into a tree or something and, yes, ma'am. We're going to see if we can, we, we're going to see if we can find any alligators. Tu vois l'endroit où il y a un peu d'eau, il y a un petit passage d'eau, là, tu remontes 30 cm comme ça, il est marron, il nous regarde, on voit un œil qui nous regarde. Tu vois Ah, je l'ai pris sur la photo. Ah oh, oui, je le vois, je le vois, je le vois. What a clock? How many o'clock from us? Or from you? Uh, How many, like, is it 11 o'clock from you? Or you <laughs> 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 Y'all see him in the front? Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, Can I see? No. I'll point. I'll point my camera. <coughs> Is that his mouth? Yeah. Is that a baby? And if we uh, can't figure out how long it is, we have to get a female volunteer to go out with a tape measure. <laughs> this guy wouldn't be any big deal if you can get to him. He's too small to hurt.
Watching her for uh, four years. Last February, I came around a tree and she's sitting there sunning herself. Uh, and on the back side, these are some babies about a year and a half old. They were maybe uh, about 15 inches. Uh, but take a good look at where you see the female. It's huge. They can go completely under the water, push themselves forward, and spear fish with their little beak. When they come out of the water, they have a nice meal problem. They have no hand to take that um, fish off their beak. So they'll begin to spin their beak around at the side of the fish. It'll make a hole in the little fish. The little fish will be hanging off the tip of his beak. Quick as you can snap your fingers, he'll flip them up in the air, catch them head first, and eat them. So that is the most amazing thing I've seen out here. still had red leaves on them and green and it looked like somebody had literally just come and painted all the trees in the water and uh, a couple of birds I got a shot you can ride all the way around here five and a half miles now you can only walk the Louisiana guard dog of all Louisiana guard dogs you don't want to mess with her they're very if you ever get chased by an alligator you have three options some people say you can zigzag because their bodies are so stiff, they can't negotiate the uh, quick turns like that. But you gotta figure, you're taking the time to zigzag, you're just decreasing the distance between you and her. <laughs> so you gotta run like hell. If that's not working, you go to option two. Option two, you climb a tree. If there's no tree, you're down to option three. It's getting pretty serious, right? Stick your foot out, trip your husband, your wife, your friend, your enemy, your kid, whoever's running next to you. <laughs> small one like that, it's only $10 extra.
head right over here. Tight. If you imagine the end of this log and you look behind there about five or six feet, you all will see it in there. Yeah, yeah, on what we'll do. Oh, there's one up there. Yeah. Yeah. Back. See, it's a good spot for him. He's out of the wind. Okay, I see him. Right close to the water, but it's so thick. Um, yeah, that's it. Watch this over the nest for 60 days. At the end of 60 days, they come out of the nest, and then the whole cycle starts all over again. She's always about the family. The male alligator, y'all, this is his life. He may mate with one, two, three females in the springtime. He's what I call the epitome of the deadbeat of all deadbeat dads. <laughs> Once he mates with her, he doesn't look back. He doesn't shut the door behind him. He never visits. He never writes and he never calls and he never sends a monthly check. And the female, because she's under the pressure of raising the family by herself, grows. Look at a little bit of Oh, never mind. I was in. I want you all to look up uh, this tree right up here where I'm pointing with the long slender leaves. This is the weeping willow tree. The Indians would take a piece of the bark of the willow tree, they would put it between their cheek and their gum, and it would relieve them of the pain of toothache. They, uh, a German scientist identified the active agent salicylic acid, invented a pain reliever called bear aspirin. The Indians passed this technology on to the European settlers and they uh, refined it. When the kids would get the teethache or the toothache, the parents would come to the willow tree, get some bark, they would boil it, make a tea out of it, the children would drink the tea and it would numb the inside of their mouth. Teeth medicine. Granny had a little bit of extracurricular juice in hers. <laughs> I had a young lady with me from West Virginia. She said, uh, woman, she'd make the tea for her arthritis medicine. She said she'd, uh, she'd go take a nap. We'd sneak in the bedroom and try to get a little nip. <laughs> this is native to Venezuela. Some of y'all may have seen this before. If you've ever seen on a National Geographic or Discovery, they're walking in about a foot and a half of water, and talk about a couillon, um, they're walking barefoot in this much water looking for anacondas. It has a beautiful lavender flower. Uh, this plant was on display at a fair in New Orleans in the early 19, in the late 1880s. And at the end of uh, this fair, they threw this plant out into the waterways and it spread like wildfire across the warm uh, southern part of the uh, United States. It's killed many small lake streams and ponds. This stuff got in here in the early 1960s, and within one year's time, all you saw growing was this plant right here and its lavender flowers. Uh, it was at the point, it was, it was literally taking over, so the only thing they could do, they went to these levees they dug deep holes, they let out 75% of the water and let it sit for almost a year. At the end of a year, they rebuilt the levees and uh, what they'll do now, they'll come with environmentally safe chemicals, chemicals that will not kill the wildlife and they keep it under control like that. But I wanna show y'all why it's so successful. Number one, it has no natural enemies here, but if you see these long feather-like roots, mm -hmm. each one of these clumps can have 30 or more of these roots. These roots can get three feet long. And all these little hairs on here, they're taking all of the nutrients 
out of the water thousands of times more quickly than the native plants can keep up with him. That's how he gets in and takes over. Hmm. What they did here, other places have tried it, they haven't been successful. It, it, was, it just worked out for them. I had some uh, people from Bangladesh. In the, uh, he was in the water, uh, he was in the uh, hyacinth. This is eventually, he's gonna be about this long, about maybe two inches long, and he'll live inside either a, a, a green or a goldish brown exoskeleton. He'll live in the water for three years, eating all kinds of insects. At the end of three years, he comes out of the water, he attaches himself to a tree, and he makes the cocoon. He stays in the cocoon for 30 days, and when he comes out of the cocoon, he is morphed into the dragonfly. Oh. He is a lean, mean mosquito eating machine. He can eat 250 to 300 mosquitoes a day. Oh, that's a baby dragonfly? Uh huh. No, he's still the water nymph right here. Oh. He's a, he's a brand new water nymph. Oh. Like I said, they'll be about this long. That's cool. I love <laughs> dragonflies. Places. Y'all all know what a hummingbird is? My favorite uh, bird out here, he's the size of a hummingbird. You come out and catch up with him. Now, I finally figured out how she got him to go along with that. She knows he gets to mate once a year, so she bleeds him for everything she can get out of him. I saw two females about a year ago. They were fighting over. The That's the alligator eating bird. I'm sorry I didn't see him. You got that? Okay, I'll turn around. Two feet. So okay, y'all, this is the uh, Grand Errol of Blue. This is the uh, alligator eating bird. So he does not want to miss the kill. So he will take all the time necessary and he moves towards him very, 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 very slowly. And as he moves towards him, he's constantly lowering his head just a little bit at a time. And when his beak gets about a foot away, he'll spear him wherever he can get to him. Then once he spears him, he'll pick him up in his mouth, drop him on the log, knock the breath out of him. And then if he's still moving, he spears him again. He has to be sure before he swallows him, he's not going to wake up on the inside fighting back to the outside. Back, the uh, tree in the back, there's a hole at the bottom. And you'll see how close these two trees are. Two years ago in the spring, I was coming here. A female whistling duck flies out of that hole, lands in the cypress tree behind me, and she's watching us. So I went looking there. She had 24 eggs. So over the next three weeks, We'd come by here every now and then, and that little mama duck would do one of four things. She may repeat the behavior I just described. She uh, may stay hiding in the hole. Several times she came out of the hole. She was standing in between the two trees watching us. And look the neatest thing she did. 
she kept her body in the hole and stuck her head out like this to see who was coming by her house. So my guests got awesome pictures. So I'm coming by here one day. I saw movement in the water. So I stopped above those two trees. He dropped his snout in the water, closed a flapper valve in his throat so the water couldn't get it. Each cormorant eats one to three pounds of fish a day. They sit in the top of the trees all day long looking for fish. And while they sit up there, they poop and they pee, and they, it kills the, uh, kills the trees. They're protected birds. There's nothing we can do about it. Watch sometimes. Um, a lot of the times, look, you'll see a long collar. supplement from this plant which has had proven results for people that have had problems with a big black tail cap like this like I said 13 or 14 years she's never had another uh, another problem since then. The salt palmetto. If y'all ever uh, can't remember the name and you know someone needs it contact our website. <laughs> two hours in between the tour so I have all these beautiful places where I can come in and read and there's nobody here except me. <laughs> uh, April of last year two unusual things happened in here. I'm coming in here one day a uh, whistling duck flies out of a hole in the tree on the right. I went, um, when I left here I went and looked and there were a bunch of eggs in there. The next morning I pulled up in here and I had a bunch of children uh, with me in the boat and the teacher was sitting up in the right front. She looked in the hole, she said, Mr. Bob, she said, you're right, they got a bunch of eggs in there, and they got a big banded water snake helping himself to the eggs. But also, if y'all look in the left here, there's kind of like a little, these uh, three or four trees in, there's a little clear area right here. Uh, I was pulling in here one day, and there was a great white egret right over here in the water, and uh, he was up in water up to his neck. Two things were unusual because me being 20 feet away from him, he didn't get up in the air and fly away. Mm -hmm. Also, when he's in water up to his neck like that, when an alligator stalks him, it's gonna take him a couple of seconds longer to get out of the water and that could be the difference between life and death. Mm 
So I pulled up uh, here and I was um, eating and a little while later, I noticed the bird is still there. He hasn't moved. So I start uh, moving my boat back. I wanted to try to see what's going on. As I got closer to him, all of a sudden he, he, he starts walking in the water. His wings come up like this and his wings were completely wrapped up in fishing line. Oh no. So now I'm hitting the panic button because I know if I try to get closer to him, he's gonna hurt himself. And I don't, you know, I don't want that to happen. Uh, but I can't leave him there because alligator's gonna get him. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So I called a friend of mine that has a smaller boat. Come on over here and see, maybe you can get. Back in July, I was in an area and looked, the algae was this thick. It was like three inches thick. And all of a sudden I heard peep, 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 peep. And there's a little. Whoa. Yeah, that's the only croc in the lake. <laughs> a couple of years ago in the wintertime, I had a lady ask me, she said, Boss, why don't you grab some Spanish moss for us to touch? She uh, wouldn't grab it herself. So anyway, I grabbed him a big bunch there looking at it. She hands it back to me. She said, what's, in, what's inside of it? And when I first looked at it, I thought it, and all of a sudden, I touched something furry and it moved. And I realized the little bat and I had something in common. If he'd have been wearing little bat pants, he about would have had to do with his pants what I was about ready to have to do with mine. <laughs> Heart attack city. Zoom in as much as y'all can, because if I get any closer to him, he's in the water. What's his name? <laughs> what do you get him? This is this one I don't have a name for. This, this. If y'all notice the little tiny bumps on his back, the bone sticking up. Mm -hmm. And underneath there is a piece of round flat bone. And inside there, so when he sits in the sun, the sun heats up the blood vessels and the heart pumps the warm blood throughout his body. And I mentioned they're cold blooded animals. Uh, they can't produce body heat. And if you notice, he's always smiling. To get on that log, his little front legs with the claws dig in and pull. And as soon as the, the longer, thicker back legs can feel the log under him, they'll push him all the way up there. <coughs> they say they can run 20 miles an hour on land but they can't go far because when they're, go they're running like this, all the weight of their body is being put on these little two front legs and they just weren't meant to carry all that weight. So if they go, as, if they go 100 feet, 125 feet, that's, that's it. He almost looks plastic, huh? <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, it, it's
it's starting to get cool uh -oh. already. It's not going to be that long. Uh oh. You see, he's nervous, the, the, the gland in his throat. Uh huh. Last April, I saw one who was maybe a, a little bit bigger than this one right here, and he's sitting on a log like that. And just it's Last April, I saw one who was maybe a, a little bit bigger than this one right here. And he's sitting on a log like that, and his, his snout is up like this. And underneath his snout is a huge turtle. The alligator was salivating, thinking about how good he would taste. The turtle was thinking, in your wildest, you're not near big enough to handle this. And my guest got some really good shots. There he goes. See what I mean about showing you all the behind on the way down? They estimate uh, within here there's a couple of thousand of them, okay. and this whole swamp is about 75 or 80,000 acres. Uh, it goes a long ways this way and that way, and there's probably four or 5,000 alligators. Okay. It was salivating, thinking about how good he would taste. The turtle was thinking, in your wildest, you're not near big enough to handle this, and my guest got some really good shots. See what I mean about showing you all the behind on the way down? They estimate uh, within here there's a couple of thousand of them, okay. and this whole swamp is about 75 or 80,000 acres. Uh, it goes a long ways this way and that way, and there's probably four or five thousand alligators. Okay. 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 In the wild, and they would have four guys, two guys to keep the mom away, and two guys to raid the nest. If there were 60 eggs, they would take 40 of them, and they would bring them back to land and they would put them in an area uh, where it was like 70 to 75 degrees and now they would live, they would eat all year long and so at the end of a year instead of only being this long they were four and a half feet. At that point they went adult and they did this for 20 years and at the end of 20 it's years they were able to start the having the hunting season again and Louisiana now has the largest wild alligator population. It's over uh, two million animals in the wild. He has a better dental plan than anybody in this boat and he never brushes his teeth, yeah. he never uses mouthwash, he never sits in a dental chair, and yet he can successfully go for between two and three thousand teeth in his lifetime. When Are you able to tell the gender? No, huh? There's two ways to tell the gender. The males live in the more open areas, okay. where there's more food and there's bigger food. Females live where it's real thick and covered, so they have as much covering for their babies as possible. Okay. Now, that being said, ma'am, if you really have to know, I can get over there real close, and all you gotta do, you just grab him by the tail, flip him upside down, put your finger in the hole on the bottom side, the back side. Uh, <laughs> Every now and then I get a few y'all. Um, there is a hunting season. Uh, next morning they come shoot him. Oh. An alligator at 10 foot long, he's Stupid. probably in his early 20s. The wildlife and fishery. Put anything on. They used to uh, uh, hunt ducks. They can't build anything on the trees anymore. <laughs> Y'all, every April. What you laughing at? Notice the curve in the egret's neck. Both him and the heron have that curve. They can either snatch up prey or they can spear. And when they're gonna, when they're gonna want to spear, they're gonna draw their head back like this, and it releases forward. It's like a. Uh, a Maybe someone stood up. And There's a tree with some Spanish moss hanging 
there's another little tree and it, there's kind of an opening yes. and he's facing us and his, cur his tail is curved to the uh, yeah. his back right. Did you take that picture? Uh, a friend of mine did. See the alligator right on your right. Il est un peu en petit dans l'eau, on me voit la tête avec moi. This alligator. How about this alligator? picture where the baby is feeding out of the mother's mouth. This one lady I know got all four of those pictures. She sat in her canoe for 40 I think y'all saw the pictures of the egrets, the great white egret. Collection of Louisiana birds was his uh, finest collection. The Audubon Society was named in his honor to stop the slaughter of the bird. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something I saw about a year ago. Um, the nesting area is over, way over to the... Thank you. 
Now we're going on the Cajun Country Swamp Tour. Now we're going on an excursion with Cajun Country Swamp Tours.